Hello, welcome to the Friday, January 11th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. It was just when I sort of got started in security around May 2000 that the I love you warm went around spreading emails with the subject line of I love you. Well, old tricks never die. We have a diary today from Brad talking about how actually pretty much sort of identical almost emails are being used today to spread the latest crypto coin miners and ransomware. The subject lines are sort of love letter related. The extensions actually just like the old extensions back then in May of 2000 are using sort of double extensions like .txt or dash .txt .zip in this case. Back in the old days, it was more straightforward .vbs. Well, and and the zip file then of course includes a script just like what the old I love you virus back in 2000 included and that then will install additional malware. So really almost the only difference between the 2000 version and this version is that the attachment is compressed and well it's now installing different malware. And talking about old vulnerabilities that are not going away, Juniper today released two sets of patches. The first one affects June OS and fixes eight different vulnerabilities. Two of these vulnerabilities have a CVSS score of 9.8, both affect libxml2. And the first one is again sort of a classic, it's a format string vulnerability. Second one is somewhat more modern in that it is a remote entity insertion. Now the second set fixes 13 vulnerabilities in Juniper's advanced threat protection and it's so advanced it includes two hard-coded credential vulnerabilities both with a CVSS score of 10 that allow the attacker to fully control the system. Now once the attacker has full control over your Juniper ATP software, the attacker can actually then also read your Splunk credential credentials because they are stored in clear text. That's a CVSS 9.9 .9 vulnerability. So really easy then to leverage this to the rest of your security infrastructure. And Qualys today released details regarding three vulnerabilities in SystemD's JournalD. JournalD is of the logging system in SystemD and these vulnerabilities are essentially stack clash vulnerabilities. Exploitation isn't trivial but possible. Qualys states that they have created a proof of concept exploit but they're not releasing it yet. The post where they release details does however include quite a bit of details about the vulnerability. So skilled attacker can probably come up with an exploit for it. Now patches have been rolled into the systemd 240-1 release. That's an unstable release. Not clear how many of the distributions have backported the patch into their current version of systemd. And FireEye has a brief blog post documenting a recent attack against the DNS infrastructure of a number of different companies in the Middle East. Now, this is not your DNS cache poisoning. This does require that the attacker has some kind of access to either the registrar or the DNS admin console of the victim company. How they exactly got access here, that's not covered in this blog post, but it's assumed that they somehow figured out what the passwords are, maybe they got reused, and it doesn't appear like anything like two-factor authentication was in use in this case. Now, once the attacker gets a hold of the DNS infrastructure, they will then add, for example, new A records, adding, for example, mail servers, and then redirecting the victim's mail through a relay that's operated by the attacker. This is, of course, an attack that's not that terribly easy to detect. You really have to watch your DNS infrastructure. 
Make sure that you're using two-factor authentication. I think that's a good start. And then also put some detective controls, put some monitoring in place that will alert you if, for example, the serial number changes off your zone or if new A records are being added or altered. In a variation of the attack, the attacker will gain access to the registrar account. With the registrar account now, that depends a little bit how much the attacker can do, but they can always change the NS records, the name servers for a particular domain. Of course, many registrars also offer DNS management. So in this case, the attacker may have access to the NS records as well as to the rest of the zone. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.